Do you know about life in prison and how much it can make or break you depending on the judgment? Sometimes hearing their sentences alone makes some convicts break down and others just shrug it off in their minds. As a matter of fact, getting sentenced to prison for life is a scary affair. And this is how those sentenced to life imprisonment have reacted. Esteban Carpio. From the jump, he had a scary demeanor. When Carpio was being interrogated by two police officers for the stabbing of an 85-year-old in Rhode Island, one of them opted to get him water. Carpio was left with Detective James Allen in the room, and Carpio managed to take the officer's gun and shoot him dead. Afterwards, Carpio leapt out a window, but was caught a few moments later. When his family saw him, they all reacted and said his bashed face is a result of police brutality, that he had mental health issues and needed help. When an FBI investigation noted that the injuries he sustained came from him jumping from three stories, he was sentenced to life in prison. Dexter Johnson A 19-year-old convicted killer flew into a rage in a Houston courtroom after a Harris County jury sentenced him to death. Dexter Johnson was one of five men who carjacked 23-year-old Maria Aparici and her boyfriend Hyun Go as they sat chatting in their car on a summer night. Prosecutors during his trial alleged Johnson had fun when he and his friends carjacked the couple and drove them around town demanding money, credit cards, and ATM access. Then they parked near a patch of thick woods and forced Ngo to listen as Johnson raped Aparachi in the back seat. Afterward, Johnson shot Ngo in the side of the head execution style before slaughtering Aparachi with a shot to the top of the head. Fernando Salgado Fernando Salgado was one of four students at A.B. Miller High School in Fontana, California, who was arrested in the attempted sodomy of another student with a steel bar broom. The other three, all minors, allegedly held the boy down and removed his pants. Another incident was reported to take place June 14th involving three students who allegedly held down another boy while Salgado attempted to sodomize him with a wooden broom handle. The 18-year-old Californian student broke down in hysterical tears in Fontana Superior Court while he was arraigned on sexual assault charges. Although he pleaded not guilty to the two charges relating to separate classroom incidents, his calm did not last long when he exploded after his sentence. Get me out of here, get me out of here, I want to go home so bad, he said. Janita Latrice and Erica Butts Erica May Butts and Shanita Latrice Cunningham both collapsed in the courtroom upon learning that they would spend the rest of their lives in prison for beating to death a three-year-old Serenity Richardson in 2009. Serenity's mother, Leisha Richardson, had been childhood best friends with Butts and had brought her daughter to stay at her godmother's home on Congaree River Drive in Somerville for about two weeks, beginning in late October 2009. Butts admitted to Somerville police on November 3rd that she whipped the girl with a belt for urinating on the floor and that Serenity had fallen several times in the bathroom. When the child's breathing became shallow that day, Butts called her own mother in Goose Creek but didn't tell her what happened. Butts' mother called 911. By the time paramedics reached Serenity, she was already dead and had been placed on ice and exposed to bleach in desperate attempts to revive her. Assistant solicitor Elizabeth Gordon said the girl's injuries reflected weeks of torture, a duration that matched the amount of time she'd spent with Butts and Cunningham. Dylan Schumacher Dylan Schumacher was the babysitter of choice for his girlfriend Ashley Smith one evening in March 2013 while Smith went to work. At 8 p.m. on March 9th, Schumacher called law enforcement, claiming the nearly one-year-old Austin Smith was unresponsive. It took Springfield, New York cops a few moments of investigation to figure out that something was rotten about Schumacher's claims. Eric County Sheriff Tim Howard says deputies arriving on scene immediately noticed the substantial bruising all over Austin's body and especially around his face. Sheriff Howard said, The mother's 16-year-old boyfriend struck the child repeatedly about the face and the cause of death was determined to be blunt force trauma about the head. Schumacher was charged with second-degree murder and tried accordingly. When he was speaking with his mother, he allegedly said, I'm a 16-year-old blonde. Probably all I have to do is cry and they, the jury, are going to feel sorry for me. Well, his luck ran out and at the sentencing hearing, Schumacher tried to put on his sad face and cried just as he planned. It didn't work very well. The presiding judge, Justice Boller, sentenced Dylan Schumacher to 25 to life for his involvement in the death of Austin Smith. Diandria Cook Diandria Cook was sentenced to prison for using a dating app to set up a robbery that ultimately led to the shooting of another teen. According to the prosecution, Cook was still a mainland high school student in March when she used a dating app to lure 27-year-old Perry Nieder to a meeting in which he expected to sell her marijuana, after which they would have sex. 
Nida brought 17-year-old Emmanuel Purcell with him, and Purcell was the one who wound up shot by Cook's boyfriend, who was waiting to rob them. As soon as the judge passed his judgment, Cook's mother started crying and howling, and she sank to the floor. Her daughter, too, went into the charade. The reactions were so loud that the judge was forced to stop the court proceedings and restart them soon after. Daniel Holtzclaw Former Oklahoma City police officer Daniel Holtzclaw was sentenced to 263 consecutive years in prison, and his reaction took the internet by storm. He was convicted of 18 out of 36 total charges stemming from the allegations of 8 out of 13 women who accused him of rape and sexual assault. The law enforcement professional sobbed at the news of his sentence, and Daniel Holtzclaw's emotional reaction to his sentencing was particularly unsettling, given the sensitive nature of the case, as well as his minimal acknowledgement of victims. To many, Holtzclaw appeared to be simply mourning his own loss of freedom rather than the guilt of his actions. Many took to social media to either condemn or mock Holtzclaw's shaking, sobbing reaction to the sentencing news following an intense series of victim impact statements from three women who all stressed the incredible psychological and emotional damage that Holtzclaw's actions had caused. One woman reportedly said, There will never be a day I won't think of the day I was violated. After many delays, including a denial to Holtzclaw for a new trial, each count of first- and second-degree rape, sexual battery, oral sodomy, stalking, burglary, indecent exposure, and procuring of lewd exhibition was read with its verdict, along with recommended sentencing for convictions. Tony Farmer The highly recruited Ohio basketball star collapsed in court after a judge sentenced him to prison for assaulting and kidnapping his girlfriend. Farmer, a rising senior at Garfield Heights High School, had an indictment that stemmed from a fight with his ex-girlfriend Andrea Lane at her apartment building in Bedford Heights, southeast of Cleveland. Farmer assaulted Lane, dragged her by her hair outside the building, and then took her cell phone, bank card, computer, and car keys. He was charged with intimidation for sending threatening text messages and voicemails to her. The entire courtroom scene is depressing and hard to watch because Farmer had such a bright future prior to this incident. Before video cameras caught this altercation with Lane on tape in the lobby and parking lot of her apartment complex, Farmer was a consensus top 100 prospect who had drawn interests from the likes of Ohio State, Xavier, Dayton, and Michigan State. What Farmer did was unequivocally wrong, and the punishment he received from Barker is appropriate. Michael Miller the millionaire collapsed and died in court after being found guilty of arson, which could have sent him to prison for decades. Michael Marin committed suicide by taking cyanide after he was convicted of deliberately burning down his Arizona mansion. The video of his sentencing apparently showed Marin putting something in his mouth minutes before he collapsed. Officials at the time speculated that he might have taken some sort of poison. Investigators later found a canister of sodium cyanide powder inside his car after being alerted to the vehicle by Marin's adult son. The son had received a delayed email from Marin about the location and said his will was in order in case things don't go well in court. Smith Riley After pleading guilty to the murder of one Miss Brooks and her boyfriend who survived, Smith Riley was charged to life in prison. After his sentence, he broke down in tears, remorseful and heaving with regret. But what is most surprising was the fact that after he had pled guilty, he asked the judge for a plea change, which was denied. This is the end of the video. Like the video and share it with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on post notifications.